So uh, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for joining and thanks for inviting me. And hello, my name is Michał Fiech. I am working in growth related roles for the last four years almost. And everything began at LiveChat around three years ago when I joined as a chief growth hacker. Then with my team, we decided to build another product called Knowledge Base IA. AI in uh, under live chat portfolio, and afterwards uh, we moved to the main live chat product as a growth team over there. And this takes approximately around three years, and it was awesome, it was fun. But around half a year ago, I decided that it's time to go forward just to see how other companies are doing growth and they are uh, approaching product development process and such things. So I decided to join a Berlin-based company called Volders DE. Basically, it's a German startup that operates only in Germany, although I don't speak German, but it works somehow. And they are, they are uh, allowing you to cancel your contract. So for example, if you have an electricity contract with Tauron, then you don't need to go to the office or, or you don't need to go to the postal office. You can just do it online and we will send it for you. And I was hired over, over there to do two things in this first half a year. The first thing was to increase revenue as much as possible as they were trying to get another financing round that was just around the corner. And the second thing was to move toward the new design of the service as a few months before I joined, they created a prototype of the new service with the new design. It, went successfully through the user research studies. And now it was time to roll it out, but not in 100%, but to chunk it in, into smaller pieces, test whether each of them doesn't decrease the conversion rates. And, it's, and if it's OK, then we should go forward with other rollouts. So those two things, increasing revenue and uh, going to, toward new design, um, requested from me to optimize the, the, the outcomes and learnings we have from the experiments. So just to approach the experimentation, uh, experimentation process from a slightly different perspective just to get as much as possible uh, as much as possible from it and this half a year this six months finished a few weeks back a few weeks ago and today i would like to share with you how during these six months we managed to speed up our experimentation process and save so i saved almost 13 hours weekly for doing calculations and such thing that I could use for the deri uh, delivering insights from the experiments. Uh, how it led us to make better business decisions that we are that we stopped doing hasty decisions on not full data and analysis, and also um, how you could use it, it a bit. So we will go through a couple of basic statistic rules. So please don't hate me if you don't hate maths, but if you want to do experiments, you need to get it. So we will go through that. And in the end, also, I will share with you the spreadsheet that I used. So maybe it will serve you as well. And first, quick questions. OK, who of you have ever done an experiment, online one? Hands up. OK, so a few people. OK, and who of you used some kind of pre-test calculations, like checking what is the minimal sample size you need to have or the minimal uplift you need to have? OK. Uh, and the third one, who of you analyzed experiments on your own, were checking p-values p or checking the, Bay the Bayesian statistics and the probabil probability charts? OK, so it's going down, down, and down. So first, we need to cover a two things and these are very the one, people who were doing something with experiments will know it very good and i hope that there is no statistician over here as they would kill me for simplifying some things but these two things are crucial that you can make up good decisions and you are not doing something um that will even decrease your con conversion rate so first what is p-value p-value represents the probability of observing a change where there is no change so Sim frankly, simply speaking, it's like you are seeing an uplift. You are thinking, OK, we did a great job. We have a huge uplift, but you are not correct. I mean, it's just a coincidence. And most probably in the next few days, uh, it will change. There will be no uplift or even decreasing conversion rates uh, because it's just statistics. You didn't have enough sample size or enough uplift. And as this is a probability that you are wrong, we want it to be as low as possible. So usually we are, s we, we are talking about 
um, level of 0 0.05, which represents like 90% of confidence that it is it, it, it could be statistically significant. And the second thing, we could say that it's the opposite, but please don't tell this to any statisticians, um, that it's the probability of observing a change where there is a change. So it's like reassuring yourself that the change you did, designed and tested, really brings uh, uplift. So in this case, you want to be as sure as possible that you are right, so we want it to be as high as possible. In, and usually we are talking about 80% of statistical power as a, uh, as a threshold. And how we use that? How the process looked at the very beginning when we started doing experiments? Um, it was quite simple. First, we had the experiment concept, so it was like the scope of changes and also we can say the why, what, and how behind the experiment. So who do we want to target, what we will change, and why we think it will work. And when we had that, we need to make sure that we have the, capa the capability in terms of volumes in uh, traffic, visitors, and conversions. And to do that, there is, uh, and those are the three test calculations. So the uh, calculator we were using for that at the time was conversion Excel calculator. And although the contrast is awful over here, um, basically, you are putting here the number of monthly traffic you have, number of conversions, how many variants you have, and you get a list of minimal uplifts you need to have after first, second, third, fourth week with the number of visitors you need. And if you have it, then you can be almost sure that, that it might be statistically significant. So this was like a checkup before we start even developing the experiment, just to make sure that we have enough traffic conversions and it even makes sense to make an experiment, because if not, then, I mean, it's quite possible that we will make wrong decisions because of lack of data. When we had that and it was ready, uh, we created uh, a full concept with all of the data, pretest analysis, scopes, screenshots of the, ch of the things we want to do for documentation purposes, and it went to coding. When it was coded, it went, it, it went live, the experiment started, and the second part um, began, so checking the results on a daily basis, just to make sure that, for example, there is no huge downcast, so we are not losing money day by day. Um, and what you can see over here is that how the process looked like. So both in the pre-test calculations and in post-test analysis, I needed to go to the Google Analytics, segment the, uh, either the experiment or the users, and get all of the information, copy and paste them into the calculator and check whether it's significant or not, what is the power, stat statistical power and so on. And it took ages. You will see on the next GIFs why. Um, but it was al also error prone because you could copy the wrong metric, you can just put it in wrong input. So there was a lot of po possibilities that you will uh, make some mistakes. But, and this is the example. So we, I needed to take the data from analytics, put it here, 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 and I could see how, what is the uplift, whether it's significant, whether the MDE are met, and so on. And basically, okay, when it was okay, we analyzed the, the, the experiment, check if it won or not, decide whether we want to roll it out or not. And basically, it worked fine. On that time, the team wasn't that big. We, were, we weren't able to do, like, let's say, three or four experiments at the same time to code of the, all of them and do that. So it was working. It was sometimes a pain in the ass. It took a lot of time to copy and paste everything, but it worked. And it worked until... Uh, a few days before my uh, boss and CPO went for holidays, we had another one of the discussions, and it was something like this. Let's think how to have at least two experiments running in parallel whenever it's possible and optimize our learnings. I said, OK, awesome. We, we have only six months. It's an awesome thing. Let's do that. And I think that we will be fast as this. I mean, we will just race. We'll have the outcomes, the learnings. Everything will just go smoothly. But then and I started to do it, so I visited Google Analytics selected the first segment without the date yet. Okay. 
No, but often I took wrong date. So I had to do it from the very beginning. And the thing is that it was happening because the G GA implementation is quite big because it's integrated with Power BI and so on. At the time when they, when they were imp implementing it, they didn't have any other product analytical tools, so they just made Google Analytics for that purposes. And I thought at the time that it's, I have now two weeks to do it because my boss is away, I did other jobs, so I would like to handle the process somehow. And those were the two biggest pain points that I had. Um, and basically what came to the rescue for me was something called Supermetrics, and I don't know who of you know it, hands up. Okay, the same people who do experiments. Um, and basically Supermetrics is, is an add-on for Google Sheets that allows you to export data from various Mm, analytical tool like Google Analytics, Facebook Ads. Uh, I guess that they have also Power BI or similar things uh, that, that, that they are integrated with, with similar things. And I thought, okay, let's use it just to resolve all of those pain points. At that point, I, I was also talking to people, checking how other companies are approaching this, let's see, scaling the experimentation process. And something magically happened after a few days. So let's move to the solution. So pretest analysis. This is the one where you had to take the monthly number of visitors and conversions, put it into the tool, and see how many visitors and uplift you need to have in each week, just so, so it will be enough. So the bigger pain, post, pain points was the Google Analytics with its lack, the thing that you needed to copy and paste it, uh, and the thing that you couldn't compare it to the results for other experiments, because each time when you reload the Google Analytics, there was new data, if, depending on what type date, date, dates you choose, you chose. So this is how the magic worked. So let's say that you have some awesome new experiment. Okay, I will. If you have any questions how it works, uh, we can talk about them after the presentation, as I don't want to get into the details right now. But let's say that you have some awesome new experiment. It's so awesome that it's so awesome that you want it to be on all devices uh, for the entire traffic because we don't know to we don't want to go uh, into f for smaller sakes uh, on the marketing link page and now magically you have the last month number of tra visitors and conversions for that segment so now you just specify the number of variants and the weeks you would like to uh, run the test for and you can see that okay you need at least 5.8%, so it's quite good. But suddenly your boss came and said, hey, let's do it only on mobile, as for desktop I have some other awesome idea. So you just need to change it, and it works. And 9.2 MDE is quite hard to get, so we can just change the number of weeks, and now let's say it's more feasible. So when you add more experiments over here, you can do all of it, so validate like, 10 experiments in less than three minutes without anything else. And you can compare which of them uh, are the best one to choose. Of course, you have the scoring next to it, so we know which, which can bring you the, the, the highest impact. But also, here you can ask yourself whether we have four weeks right now, as we are in hurry, to do, let's say, the first experiment. And um, this allowed me to save like three hours weekly as we are trying to make as many concepts as possible and then just validate them. If they make sense, we, we can do it then uh, ex t test them. So it's like three hours weekly. And now the, for me, as I like the statistics and those charts and numbers for me, it's quite exciting, is the post-test analysis. So the one where you again had to go to Google Analytics, you again had to take all of the dat those data, put it into the calculator, see whether it's statistically significant and now the best part do a screenshot save it on your desktop and do the same next day and the next day and the next day as p values changes so if after seven days it was the experiment was significant you don't have any you know quite often you don't have any guarantee that the next day it will still be significant so yes this will really pain the ass and doing if you have like two experiments running at the same time and both of them took two weeks, it, it could really take even to, uh, uh, for me up to 13 hours weekly. So I did the same. 
I used supermetrics, gathered on a daily basis the results of the experiment, replicated some of the statistical form, uh, equations into the spreadsheet, and after doing that, you got something like this. And this is awful for most of you, I guess. This is boring, this is unsexy, this is hard to read. However, over here, you have all that you need to do something like this. And again, this might not be sexy, but this chart tells you whether you, how sure you can be regarding an experiment. Over here, we have dates. So the next, the next day that, ex that the experiment goes. The blue line is the p-value. As long as it, it is below the yellow line, it's significant. So we want to have it always. The red one is the uplift that we can have. And in this case, we could say that this is, for example, experiment uh, checking if social proof works. You have the small na notch notification in the, let's say, lower left part of the website that someone just bought something. And after having like two weeks of something like this, you could say that, okay, most probably this won't change and you can just roll it out. This is a no brainer. However, often you have something like this. And we could say that this is a new payment method that you wanted to implement in your service. So if you wouldn't look uh, on the experiment analysis in this way, most probably somewhere here, you would already make a decision that it's working awesome. We have like 7% on average more conversions. We'll just rock the world with that, so let's roll it out. But because there was no enough sample size and conversions, we kept it for longer, and this is what happened. So after almost a week and a half, it just the p-value blow away. And as you can see, the conversion rate also went more towards zero. So we can say that so we could say that implementing this new payment method doesn't bring any difference at all. And this might sound sad as you were working on that for that long and it doesn't work, but this, this has also its uh, advantages. As in this case, you could say that it's, you just change, you change nothing. There's no difference at all. But in terms, for example, of redesigning stuff in your application where you don't change any functional aspect, but only design, or when you are checking something, <laughs> changing something in the back on, on the backend side, so it shouldn't affect the customers, but it's a huge migration. This is a great indicator that you can just roll it out to 100%. And this is also something that we are using when <coughs> uh, we are doing the experiments optimized for the new design and new prototype. So we are optimizing the design so it should improve the conversion rates. We are t testing a lot of things. We are going back to first principles, to different techniques or just beha behavior, uh, cognitive psychology. However, if we see something like this, it's a good sign for us because we can move forward with the new design and new stack because it's not breaking our business back. And I would say that this is all as because this is because this saved 10 hours weekly. But keep in mind that this is Google Analytics. So if you want to add revenue data over here, go on. It's Google Analytics and spreadsheet. You can add it. If you want to check how the experiment variant work in terms of average order value or revenue or cost, you can do it. I mean, it's just like playing in Excel. So <coughs> this project also is quite open for, for further development. And what we gained with that? Mm, as I'm getting closer to the end. Uh, with those two things that took me around, I would say, four days, five days to come up and set up everything like that. We gathered, uh, I saved 13 hours weekly, around 13 hours weekly to focus on learnings, not on cal calculations. We get better analysis and a lot of learnings because believe me, if uh, you have a German market and no, not other markets, so we could say that it's quite unified target group. If you see like 20 or 30 of these charts, you can learn whether it will change or not because Except for seasoning or such, uh, such things, I mean, you can just learn better your business and make better decisions and make them faster. Uh, and also over here, this was a document emoji, but it, it's, it's 
I don't know what is it, it is right now. Uh, but keep in mind that also when you have uh, those charts, it's very easy just to do a screenshot for the doc documentation purposes. Uh, because maybe it will also be bored, but if you do a lot of experimentation and you don't document them, then you are losing like half of the insights you get. So this is something that you need to do also. And those solutions, so this uh, spreadsheet is easy to extend because you can integrate it with Airtable, with Trello, with Jira, with Data Studio for better visualization, uh, or with anything else because, for example, with Zy uh, via Zapier. And thanks for your time just to um uh, sum it up with this approach and with this framework in this last six months we did around 20 few experiments uh, in a team of four people i would say uh, whereas six or seven of them brought real uplift in terms of conversion rates and we roll it out whereas the other two or five uh, four or five led to i mean it was inc inconclusive so there was no difference and it was a great for us as those experiments were the one aimed at redesigning stuff so if any of you would like to you you, you can see that maybe this chart this spreadsheet would help you or you will see something else or just want to copy and paste formulas uh then let me know on on linkedin please over here because the presentation will be online i guess also shared so over here you can find my linkedin or Twitter, just let me know and I will send you the link. However, disclaimer, I need around a week to do it as we just get back from holidays yesterday, so I need to modify it. Uh, and one last ask for those who will take the spreadsheet, please don't make it public as some of the custom JavaScript script, uh, scripts over there were just taken from the calculator that I used previously. So. I guess they have some copyright or something, so please don't sell it. I mean, it is it is free, but I don't know if the code can be used. So, uh, but it's working. Uh, yep, and I guess that this is all. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, now it's the time. Any questions? Hey, great talk, by the way. Um, I learned about uh, MVP and experiments through two uh, two concepts, honestly, lean startup and lean UX methodology. Mm -hmm. They say what it means to uh, what it means for a team to run um, quantitative experiments because the mm -hmm. scope of learning is huge. You take yep. less risk, and um, f maybe from your experience, would you, um, would be interesting to know how would you tie those experiment results with the hypothesis that you want to validate? Because the notion of running experiments is to test your hypothesis. Exactly. It's basically, the expected behavior change for your customers and mm -hmm. how is that tying to the business impact? Okay. So maybe is there any uh, ways that you do, like uh, tying those results with the hypothesis? Sure. Uh, first, I will talk in general, and then I will say about an example. So uh, first, when you're doing user research, or even just record, first, talk, talk, talk to the users, do some kind of polls in the application, uh, even check recordings, you can notice some patterns that happening. And, uh, and that's one source of the information for the hy hypothesis. And the second one is, um just let's see from some from some patterns or other information you have and other experiments you did in the past so now the example um when we were optimizing the checkout process and the last step we noticed based on different experiments and insights that a lot of people just use the default option and they don't even see that there is a payment that they need to do and they are just scrolling down and choosing it and for us it was um and this was the, the, the first insight, the first hypothesis. So if we change the default method to the plan that is slightly higher priced, we will get more uh, revenue. And the second thing was that based on other experiences that we had in the past and first principles about uh, social proof, we added just a few trust icons like the German tooth logo that's reassurance that you are a valid business, some tool type of information that based on X number of cancellations of this vendor, we know which that this particular delivery method priced higher is more effective and so on. And we just roll it out as an experiment. So the first hypothesis was that uh, people use default plans and as long as it is effective, they are happy. So if we choose the higher plan, we should have the same conversion and higher revenue. The other one was that adding trust symbols and let's say reassurance and tool tips will increase the conversion rates because of uh, other, f I mean, other insights we had previously and psychology. And we run the test 
Uh, and the, the one with the default option brought us almost 20% uplift in the revenue. But we noticed that a lot of customers were not conscious about that. And because of the other product that we are currently developing, we couldn't afford that, as we want to, to have higher ratings and trust after the service. Whereas the one with the tooltips and trust icons, I mean, it proved almost no difference. So in this way, it's quite easy to tie it up. So we are just using the insights from the uh, qualitative uh, insights, and we are just trying to turn it into some changes in the product. And one thing that I could recommend is that uh, when you are designing the experiment itself, and you have a lot of ideas or, or a lot of elements that you add, try to track as much things as possible, because maybe then when you are do doing the post analysis, you will notice that on some segments or some uh, traffic sources or some, let's say, contract vendors or something, you will notice different behavior, that there was no uplift in, let's say, half of the group, but on the other one, there was a huge one, and this is also an insight for you, so we could use it further. Just one uh, recommendation and pro tip, don't try to look for significance in smaller segments, because you will always find some, on, on smaller numbers, you will always find some significance, but you have don't you, you don't have enough data, so don't try to confirm that you were right and the experiment is wrong. Trying to to look for significance, just take that it didn't it didn't work. Yeah, about the experiments, right? Okay. <laughs> you're talking about you're talking about experiments like uh, when the development is already done, mm -hmm. right? Is there a way, maybe in your experience, uh, to do some like a smaller experiments, not to spend Mm -hmm. Development type, a uh, development type uh, time upfront, so we can yes. do some small experiment and then to prove our hypothesis that it's actually worth doing. Yes, and I guess that anyone who worked for a long time without enough front-end developers will get to that point. But as long as you have some experiment uh, and tool for that just divide traffic and accept JavaScript and GTM, you can do almost everything. And uh, for example, the one experiment with the higher price, different default methods, and so on, it was done without any front end developers. I was just able to do it on my own with GTM, just playing with smaller parts, changing them when the page loads, and so on and so on. So, yes, this is possible. And also, if you can't do, if you want to confirm all of the smaller pieces before you make a huge experiment, you can just test the smaller ones. I mean, the, the, let's say the particles of the main exp experiment. But keep in mind that going with small changes more pro most probably won't get you any big, I mean, any big uplift. If so, it's most probably a bug. <laughs> but, but if you want to have higher uplift, you need to change more things and make sure that it's consistent. I mean, that there you have the synergy effect. However, always track everything so you know what was the reason of the uplift? It's it's one of the our biggest discussions, almost during every bigger experiment. What we should add to the scope and what should, and what we should take out of it. So it's it is not nor too small, neither to neither too small nor nor too many changes at the same time. So it's just like playing a bit. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm from Reiner. Okay. Uh, from your experience, maybe mm -hmm. you have some some example when you did an experiment which proved that the change is worth doing, mm -hmm. and in the end it turned out to be a failure. Uh, that it was a failure, I wouldn't say, but to the point that it didn't bring as big uplift as it should, yes. Because, for example, we noticed uh, the one example, of course the data were preparated, but we really tested the social nudges and proofs that was just popping up and it brought like 70 percent of uplift for um, for the people from paid campaigns and we had enough traffic and, and it was significant but we noticed that with the time the conversion went back again so i guess that this is something that and which called the law of shitty click for rates or something like that that at the very beginning every method is quite effective and then it's going down and you need to find something else and you have to push more nudges. Yeah, or <laughs> and make your users irritated. <laughs> or add a pop-up on the nudges. 
don't give him bad ideas. He's from Ryanair. Um, and, and then at another pop-up to close <laughs> other pop-ups. <laughs> Any other questions? No. Okay, thank you, Miho. Okay, thanks.